Hello and welcome to Paradise Found, the official Almost Paradise after show. I am Yel Teagle. I'm Kira Lynn. And this is a preview for season two of Almost Paradise. We are going to show you some behind the scenes footage. We're going to talk to the cast and crew. But first, it's been so long since season one of Almost Paradise. So let's get a little refresher from the cast and co-creator Dean Devlin. Almost Paradise is about an ex- DEA agent. Alex Walker. Apparently he's some sort of a legend. He spent more time under deep cover than anyone else in the Bureau. There was the top of his field. He's one of the best in the world. How's the anxiety? You're not going to screw this up and have one of your little episodes, are you? He's sort of forced into retirement. He has somewhat of a breakdown. With your level of hypertension, your heart will become enlarged. It's a... I know. A ticking time bomb. No, there's no ticking. Just boom. Heart failure. He needed to find a way to de-stress his life. Fifteen years ago, one of my assignments took me to a little isolated beach on this island. No TVs, no phones. I always thought it'd be a great place to retire. No stress, no drama. Just peace and quiet. And he shows up, and it's just, uh, it's not even anything close to what he, he remembered. It's, uh, it's just causing more stress and more havoc. But it's also a place where the rich and famous criminals from around the world go to vacation. So he finds himself drawn into adventure after adventure, despite his efforts to relax. Hey guys, how are you? Listen, anybody up for a game of snooker? Hey, Amboy, shove off. Easy, Lodi. Yeah, easy, Lodi. You're starting to sweat. That vein in your forehead's starting to pulsate. Your left hand's twitching, your breathing's erratic. I'd say your blood pressure's what? 180 over 90? Alam mo, umalis ka na bago ang labit-bitin palabas. I didn't understand what you said. But what I did here was your heart about to come out of your chest. You'd be on your way to a coronary or even an aneurysm. You don't want to die today, do you? I play Kai Mendoza. You broke up a sting operation we've been working on for three months. She's kind of the heart of the show. She's an idealist. She does this for all the right reasons. Kai can pretty much do it all. She's a, she's a tough cookie. She wants to make a difference in her community. You're a good detective, Kai. One of the best in my department. Thank you. That's why I chose you to take on a special mission for me. Are we talking murder case? Something undercover? I'm assigning you to Governor Rosales' protective detail. That type of job is normally reserved for someone more junior. She just constantly wants to prove herself. What's up with Silent Bob here? Does he ever talk? When I have something to say. Hey. I play Detective Ernesto Alamares. Ernesto's kind of the soul of the island. My buhai. Breathe it in. It's all around you. He was an amateur fighter before he entered the police academy. Ah! You're even stupider than you look. He likes being in the background as a support system. It's really fun to play off of these guys. Oh, hey, hey, boat's this way. We're going to a judge, we're gonna get a warrant, we're gonna do this right. You wanna do it right? You walk in and they don't like me at all. He doesn't annoy you, even a little. A little. Thinks he knows everything, tells me how to do my job. Jagged cuts. Definitely not an assassin's blade, probably a utility knife. You tell all that by looking at a photo of a wound. You can't. You have a unique set of skills and experience that our local department doesn't have. We could use your assistance. We don't need any help from outsiders. Alex will find that relaxing is very difficult this season. You have 30 seconds to convince me not to kill you. Every time he thinks he can, he gets drawn into whether it's a kidnapping or a robbery or a shakedown. Shootouts, you know, and fights. The way we're filming this show, the action is brutal, it's hardcore. I love doing stunt work, you know, I've done my own stunts for 20 years. It's fun, that has great action in it, has great adventure to it, but also characters that you want to spend time with and you want to learn more. I think people are going to be very surprised to see what happens. 
You guys, we are about to get into our favorite moments from season one. I'm going to start finding Mabuhai. You guys, this episode, we get to meet all of the characters and uh, that villain, he, he is so vicious. It actually establishes all the different villains that we are going to meet, how terrible they are throughout the rest of the season. I killed him with an ice pick to his heart. I could feel his life leaving his body through my hands. And now you're next. Goodbye, Mr. Walker. On this island, we say Pa'alam. Pa'alam. And if you want to look at people we meet, let's take a look at episode two, which is It's Personal. This is the episode where we meet Rita, who I think became my favorite character in this entire series. How long has your mom been working at the hotel? Since they opened. Sometimes after school, I get to hang out there until she's finished. Well, I guess I got lucky. That takes one of us. But you want to know what my favorite thing was in episode three? Real eel soup for the soul? It was all the food. The fact that we all, we got to sit down and watch Christian eat some of the most delectable Filipino dishes of all time. I love that. It's just my work. Episode four, Pistol Whip, is one of the most emotional episodes of the season. I feel like we got a lot of heart in this episode and a lot of heartbreak. In episode five, Unbecalming was a typhoon of an episode. The typhoon comes and we've got Lockhart and flooding of the police station. I absolutely loved it. Episode six, Rise of the Kalungai. I love that we got Kai's backstory. I feel like it's been a long time coming. I am so impatient. So to finally get this history of hers was fascinating. You're a good daughter coming here. Not good, guilty. My mother is a spiritual leader of our village. She believes so much in the power of the old ways. She fought so hard to keep tradition alive. Then we get to episode 107, Uncle Danny, Richard Kine can do no wrong in my eyes and I want him to come back for season two hopefully that happens I hope I'm not disappointed but she thinks that her damage is because of your damage so that's why I came here to make, to make amends yes you should try it episode eight lone wolf this episode gives us a nod to Christian's love of music, and it was so fun to see him dealing with a rock star, because Christian is a rock star. Stand here howling at you. I just sang with August Crow. Episode 9, oh my gosh, A Wedding to Die For. I do have to say that I feel that Kai kind of gave off Jennifer Lopez vibes as the wedding planner. Yes. Who'll be in charge of your final look. Hair, makeup, it works. How much is this costing me? No extra charge. It's all part of the wedding package. The season one finale gave us Alex's daughter. It gave us a, a resolution. It brought the story all together. I absolutely love the way that this episode tied this season into a nice little bow and set up hopefully where we go in season two. My favorite part of the season finale, there were bombs. Love that. <laughs> That was such a fun walk down memory lane, but let's talk about what could be coming up in season two. What can fans be excited about for season two? Oh, much deeper stories, much more exploration of the humanity. They will sympathize and empathize with the new characters coming in uh, to help tell stories that we're all familiar with in a setting that's very appealing and entertaining and attractive and uh, heartbreaking. I'm excited for them to see that we did this as Filipinos and that we are highly capable of making such. I think at the end of the day, I'm, that, that's been the biggest motivation, like showing talents and being able to tell the world that this is what we can also do. So I think that's something to be excited about. 
What I most excited about a season two is um, we've done some really unique episodes. We've done a flashback episode where we go back uh, in time and allow our characters to play other parts while someone retells that story. Well, that's really exciting. What's exciting and different about this season is to see how our characters have grown, to see how their relationships are, to see how they're interacting, and to see that they are a family now and they have to make some big decisions. There's an episode this season where Kai and Alex kind of reveal a little bit about each other and how they feel about each other. And I think that's also something that starts to grow and develop over the last half of the season. It was their first season and it's there again, the interaction between Kai and, or Kai and Alex, uh, me and Sam. Uh, it's so much fun because we just like to poke each other, you know what I mean? And, it's, uh, and, and just to make each other mad. So I think her, her arc this, this year is really important and, and she's done a fantastic job at pulling it off as well. I noticed that there's a lot of action. A lot of uh, fight scenes. A lot of uh, like funny scenes. Our lead actor is a really uh, good, charismatic guy. Very good-hearted too, and it shines in his performance. There's more fights this year. I think the fights are amped up. There's, they're bigger fights, and they're pretty brutal, man. So that's going to be a lot of fun for everybody if you like the action scene. And then, of course, you know, getting to play with Rita again. There's some, there's some really, really good, you know, we had a really great scene. And we have more scenes yeah, now. Yeah, we do. We have more scenes now. And it's also, you know, we had a pretty good emotional episode the first season where her dad passed. Uh, he was murdered. And this season, we have a couple more of those emotional scenes and stuff with, uh, with her. And it's really, it's very fun working with her. Yeah, it's, it's a blast. Well, honestly, I think they love everything. That's why we're making a season two. Mm -hmm. And they love Alex's action, how he's so good at talking to people. New characters that come on the show, um, new villains, new bad guys that we get to take down. And, you know, you see the relationship between Kai, Alex, Ernesto, and Ocampo. We get closer, obviously, and we grow more as people. Um, and I'm excited for you guys to see that. Before we move forward, let's go back to the beginning with co-creator and executive producer, Gary Rosen. Dean Devlin and I had been working on shows up in Portland, Oregon, and uh, uh, Vancouver, Canada, and we looked at each other one, one day and said, can we make a show in a warm place? And initially, we decided to set the show in Hawaii, uh, but uh, then... Hawaii Five O came along and Magna PI, the reboots. And one day Dean said, what about the Philippines? And uh, that set off the, uh, the alarm bell that like this was a good idea. And we felt that hadn't been done. And we felt that there's a unique relationship between American audiences and Filipinos. And it became an organic thing from there. So the one-liner that we came up with to describe the situation of the character is uh, Jason Bourne wants to become Jimmy Buffett. Alex Walker, who's our main character, is a former ace DEA undercover operative who has hit the wall and has decided that he is checking out on the war on drugs and wants to go to a place that's as far away from that as he can get. And he s decides to go to a place that he visited many years ago that uh, was the most peaceful, quiet beach he'd ever been on. And when he returns there 20 years later, finds that it's no longer that. Last time I was here was just a bunch of thatched huts on the beach. Lots of construction. Best resort in Pacific. Yes, come from all over the world. And instead of getting away from trouble, trouble finds him. We thought that a, it, it would become a sort of fish out of water type story where a, a man of action tries to, to become a pacifist, a man of peace, a man who's checked out of the uh, life that he, he's lived up until this point. Then the twist on it, we thought, was what if 
the idyllic place that he chose to go to turns out to be more trouble than where he came from. So that's where we came, where we started from. And of course, every show uh, takes on its own life as you cast, as you bring in writers, as the ideas start to flow. And but that was the starting point, and the show has has developed into what it's it's become from there. Part of Alex Walker's dilemma is that he has come to the Philippines partly to deal with a life-threatening hypertension issue. 180 over 90. So I'm a good blood pressure, I'm a bad blood pressure. It's not cholesterol, Alex. There's only one blood pressure and it's too high. But what he finds is that his attempts to live a normal life create more tension for him than actually getting involved in, in uh, dangerous situations. So this is his dilemma. He wants a normal life. A life of constant action and danger is not sustainable, but somehow the constant action and danger seems to uh, lessen his hypertension more than running a gift shop on the beach. Dean and I didn't want this show to be a straight procedural, uh, to be dry. We wanted it to be a fun action adventure, which we felt is a little bit missing in the television landscape right now. So the adventures that uh, Alex Walker and his two um, partners get involved in range from uh, sunken submarines and buried treasure to Black Widow killers to what we call our Star is Born episode where Alex uh, has to take on a troubled uh, singer who's uh, come to perform in the islands. So we, we wanted to take on uh, the broadest palette of possible adventures we could get into. We, we never wanted this to be a dry procedural, and fortunately it's not turning out that way. Dean always likes to say that our attitude towards uh, storytelling is within the first five minutes of the show, the fun train pulls out of the station, and our job is to make sure that the fun train never stops going. Movement, energy, excitement are the things we're trying to bring to each episode. And because we're shooting in the Philippines where no international show has ever shot before, we feel that the local culture, the local color, and the personality of the Filipino people gives the show its uniqueness. But once Alex becomes integrated into the world of Mactan and the Philippines, cases start coming to him that are increasingly unique to the area and that are also increasingly elaborate. By the end of the season, we've introduced characters from Alex's past who've tracked him down. Uh, but we also have individual episodes uh, that range from the food truck scene in Cebu, Philippines, to uh, the scuba diving, which is some of the finest in the world. We do a lot of underwater work in the show. We try to take in as much of the area where we're shooting as we can to create the, the world of Almost Paradise. You already know and love him, but let's check in with Christian Kane, also known as Alex Walker. Hi, I'm Christian Kane, and I play Alex Walker on Almost Paradise. My name is Alex Walker. I'm ex-DEA. One of my first assignments took me to an isolated beach right here on this island. Sold a little I had and bought myself a gift shop. Just peace, no stress, no drama. Boy, was I wrong. And he's, uh, he just wants to retire. The, the government has forced him to retire. He makes a small government check that he has to collect. We find out later why he needs that check. He's trying to take care of his daughter. And, uh, and we also find out that his hypertension really wasn't related to the job because his heartbeat doesn't go up when he's working. It only goes up when he's thinking about his life and where he may have messed up. So he's trying to get that money to his daughter. His hypertension is from that. And when he patches things up sorta with her, um, his hypertension kind of goes away. Which, so he was kind of healed by healing himself using her. He just came here to not talk to anybody. And he found out that he actually does love talking to all these people. And so he's very, he's, he, he, he was welcomed. Um, and they, these, all, all these people made this a home for him. And in that process, he helped clean up their home a bit. And I think the people appreciated having him here. 
I think any time you create a television show with a hero main character in it, that person automatically becomes your creative partner. And Dean Devlin and I have worked with Christian Kane in the past, and I have become huge fans of him, have watched him to v- develop as a performer. And strangely, when we first came up with the idea, Christian was already working on other shows for us. So we didn't think of him first. But then as the show uh got closer to fruition, Christian became available and we realized he was the perfect person. So I have to say Alex Walker is a creation uh, by our writers, but our inspiration always for the character was Christian. It's, it's a very fun role to play because um, it, it's, it's not so serious, yet it is. You know, his heart could explode at any time if he gets really stressed out and it's really fun to play someone that is stressed out a lot and has to control that in situations that he has no control over. I'm gonna pay you, all right? You know I don't get my benefit checks until Thursday. Then you get water on Thursday. And what am I supposed to do until then? <sighs> Smell real bad. And Dean and I both feel that Christian brings a quality to an action hero that's that we love, which is, I always call it the James Cagney factor. You know, this somebody who's tough, who's um, pugnacious, but who's you always know is on the right side and um, the audience can relate to as a everyman. Alex Walker is a man who is trying to reinvent himself and is finding it incredibly difficult to escape who he used to be. You know, having Christian Kane play this part is such a blessing because he gives you so many different looks and uh, placings uh, in many different ways. But what's also interesting is he's a guy who just wanted to go on vacation. So it's always seeing his struggle of wanting to get involved, of not wanting to get involved, but because of who he is and all the experience he has as a DEA agent, he just can't help himself. So it's so seeing him, you know, as a director, watching him make those choices of uh, I'm just going to do it. You know, I'm going to not even tell people I'm just going to do it or fighting himself and, and seeing that struggle till he finally, of course, does want to help and does save the day, so to speak. So that's that that's exciting. And also the balance of, of Christian as an actor where he can give you um, the seriousness um the strength, but also the humor. And I think um, some of that, just with Christian's ability as an actor, with just different looks, even when he's not saying a line, he can give you so much. One of the great uh, surprises and gifts of doing this is we knew we would have to cast largely Filipino actors. We had no idea what the talent pool was going to be like there. And we feel that in our two main co-stars, Samantha Rochelle, who plays Kai, and Art Acuna, who plays Ernesto, are absolute finds. Hi, (laughs) I'm Samantha Rochelle. I play Detective Kai Mendoza. She is a detective who is very male-dominated industry, being in the police force. And she's quite young and she just constantly wants to prove herself um, because nobody really takes her seriously, especially her her chief. Um, So she's constantly just trying to be the best that she can because she cares a lot about her job. This is the end of the Soloco gang. When I met Samantha, I said, this girl's a cop. I mean, I saw what she was doing and, and there was a lot of unbelievable actresses that came in, but I said, this one's the cop, she's a cop. You can see where she's coming from and I, I could see it right away. And I'm so glad that she got the role because it's very fun to play off her. As the season begins, Alex uh, is a de facto mentor to Kai in the area of undercover work. And as the season goes on, Kai uh, becomes more than simply a protege, but becomes a partner as she learns the uh, tricks of the trade uh, that Alex has uh, accumulated over his 20 years as a DEA undercover operative. Uh, She is extremely serious about her job and wants to be the best at it. So Alex is a irritant and an asset to her both. 
you know, he kind of comes in and sort of tells us how to do our job, but we do end up actually asking for his advice because he actually knows what he's talking about. And we end up solving crimes, making sure the bad guys are put in jail. As the season progresses, we've, uh, we've deepened and made Kai a more integral part of the story. And it's nice to see her dynamic with her partner, Ernesto, because he really looks out for her and he really knows what she goes through every day. Hi, my name is Art Acuna. I play Ernesto Alamares, a detective for the Mactan Police Department. Art also is a fantastic find. My wife likes to say he's the Filipino Scott Glenn. He is a terrific action star, but there's a depth to his character. And since we've always referred to Ernesto's character as the soul of our team, Art Art has that uh, still waters run deep quality that uh, that we love. We flew to Manila. Uh, me and Dean did to do some auditions. When we when, and when we got there, a couple of people came in, all great actors. But he came in, and I started. He was walking out of the room, and I'm jumping up and down. I'm going, get this, you know. And Dean's like, calm down, calm. And I said, but that, I knew right away. And I think Dean did as well. And he brings such a intriguing level of sophistication to his character. And he, he keeps me grounded. I get to go way out, nuts out all the time. I knew that that was a guy was gonna be able to do that when I met him. I said, this guy is gonna make sure that I can go as high as I want because we can always come back down to him. And that's a testament. I mean, that's just, you know, he's, he's, he's great at what he does and he keeps me grounded. The dynamic with um, Sam and Art is pretty much the same as Kai and Ernesto. I, you know, he's, very much a, a big brother to me on the show and, you know, in real life. And, you know, it's like we, it's that dynamic where we can almost finish each, finish each other's sentences because we know each other so well. Um, and we kind of has, have gone through, you know, a lot together and professionally and, you know, personally. And, you know, he's, I definitely look to him for answers and advice and, you know, I'm very lucky to have him, you know, on the show and off the show. Well, I spent some time in New York. I actually lived there for almost 20 years. And that's part of the back background of Ernesto Alamares as well. You know, I think he came from a middle class family and he was educated abroad for a few years. He can speak with a Filipino accent too. And he's fluent in Tagalog but he can also speak standard straight English. Plus, in his free time, he probably does accents in his room just for the hell of it. <laughs> Not bad. That's perfect. Maybe we don't make such a bad team after all. Man, the team dynamic on this show is, is fantastic. It's really fun to play off of these guys. It's really great because, you know, they, you walk in and they don't like me at all when you, when you first see the show. And then we're starting to build a relationship and then it falls apart and then we build it back up and then it falls apart. And it's just, it's so much fun working with them because the two of them as partners, they're, they're, they're almost yin and yang. Samantha's kind of like me. She goes off the rails sometimes with, with, with anger and passion. And then, you know, Ernesto's there, who's played by Arthur, just to bring us right back, you know, to the ground. And it was very funny because when I was in the writer's room before we, moved, we came out to the Philippines, my boss, Dean Devlin, who I've worked with on numerous shows, he said, uh, he said, Alex is the brains and Kai is the heart and Ernesto is the soul. And you never know if you're going to get that when you cast people. And uh, it ended up becoming so true, it was ridiculous, man. So it's very funny. I don't know if I'm the brains, but those guys are definitely the heart and the soul. We talked favorite moments of season one with the cast. Let's take a look. I think the pilot. I think the very first episode we ever shot is still my favorite just because it was brand new. We all got to find these characters together. Um, we shot one and two together, so I, I count that as one episode. That's where we were introduced to her as well, to Rita. 
And um, and I I don't know Mark Roskin came out and I had worked with him so much on leverage. I mean we've done I don't know how like something like twenty five thousand hours of TV like almost seriously. He was kind of something that I could lean on in finding this character. Mark was allowed to lean on me because he knows me and knows how to direct and knows what I'm going to bring. And then we got to involve the Filipino style of shooting, you know, which was which was two different styles that were like this. And it just, and we found a way for everybody to work together using our styles, using their styles, and it gelled really quick. And we saw that in the first and second episode. So I just loved it. My favorite would have to be the one with Richard Kind, because he's such a wonderful actor. Well, I've always liked boats and water. Uh, we did a lot of water work, season one, and dive tanks, et cetera. My favorite episode or moment in season one was. I got to direct the pilot episodes. So Dean Devlin and Gary Rosen gave me two scripts and said, go shoot a TV show in uh, the Philippines. So for me, that was a big moment that they trusted me with kicking off the show and those first two episodes. So I'm so grateful for them that they trusted me to do that. Uh, there was a lot of great moments just establishing all the characters, but one of my favorite moments was in episode two when Alex went undercover and he went to the night cl nightclub and he started having a panic attack, which we set up in, in the opening episodes and saw that he had to see medical attention for this problem. And in the middle of a case, he has one of his attacks. He passes out. And fortunately, Kai is there to get him back on track. And uh, that was one of my favorite moments because it really established a lot of what he is going through and the relationship that he built with Kai. From season one, I guess it's the hero sets. I learned the responsibility in making hero sets because in every episode you come back to it. Building something can potentially be a challenge, but creating a texture and the backstory in it is another. The gift shop is in essence, you know, like it's supposed to be tacky at some point, but it's also, it, it's supposed to also create interesting fact that, you know, the texture brings color to life and it's what paradise describes and then the, the police station at the back of my head it's like how does a corrupt government look like but also hard working in the middle so you don't know if they're good or they're bad to create such many layers and I'm, i've always been a fan of like you know so many layers of set and i thought i created i went too much <laughs> by, by building the police station it's because you see through and through with all the offices and I, th I think it gives me a good collective memory of like how Filipino offices look like also. It's not a good story without a good villain. So we got to ask the cast who their favorite villain from season one was. My favorite villain from season one, Rabara, because I got to spend a lot of time with him on set, just being able to watch him turn into this character that I loved so much to the character that just I hated the most. Um, and I think he played that part really well. You got one? No, I don't like any villains. She doesn't like any of the villains. <laughs> the villain that I remember the most was uh, Ryan Eigenman because we had a, 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 during the time I had a lot of uh, interaction with him. We did a lot of scenes with him. And so I liked uh, him and his group when when Ryan was in the department in the police department and he was uh, being saved by his people so I like them all I like the goons uh, who were good actors also from the Philippines I like them very much because uh, they were funny at the same time who was my favorite villain in season one I do not have a favorite villain in season one to me they're all bad guys and I'm gonna put them in jail I think my favorite villain is going to have to be Will Devon. He was he was he was a good friend, still is to this day, and I think he just played it. I think he played it really really well. He was in the very first one, so that that that's um, we've got a lot of really good villains this year, and so I, I'm glad you're not asking me that question. I think Will would have been the one that I that because we became boys and all that stuff, and it was fun. We were just you know uh, that was my favorite villain. I think of season one. There's a lot of great ones this season and I can't wait to share with everybody. Creating the style of any show is a, a team effort and we're not only working with the uh, usual creative colleagues that we work with here in the United States, but we have a huge creative team 
in the Philippines that we're working with as our partners. I believe a lot of the uh, creative style of the show comes from the, the mixture between the two. For instance, um, most of the directors on the show are Filipino, and they're bringing their own flavor to it. Dean and I are trying to bring a little Hollywood pizzazz to it, and we're thinking that the combination might work very well. You know, with production design, we had to build um, your typical police station, your detective's office. So, um, and we wanted it to feel, you know, kind of unique, but also feel grounded that, that this could be in the Philippines. So being able to build that from scratch was, was a lot of fun, and also being able to work with the production designer in designing that, you know, having windows and being able to do those cop walk and talks so you can chew up a bunch of dialogue and still be in one shot and moving through places. Um, as a director, it's great to be involved where you can, you know, be building the set that and seeing things in your mind that you know you want to shoot in a certain way and, and to be there from the start to help shape that. That's, that, that's just a blessing. Wardrobe was something that we wanted to have a guy who was a former DEA agent, Alex, but he is also on vacation. So he's always wants to be in vacation mode, but then he gets having to be pulled in on the job. And in our show, he, he gets to wear different hats. He gets to play different parts. Being an ex-DEA agent, he knows how to go undercover. So we get to uh, allow Christian to wear a different hat and, and, and play. And it's always fun when they get to do that. Some of the things are local attire that you would wear at a resort or some of the things um, just to fit in into the Philippine cu culture. And then, of course, when he has to play a part, you know, he, he gets to wear a costume. So uh, the costume designer worked really hard in, in creating all these looks, and we just have great people to put them on. I mean, with Christian, with Sam Rochelle, who plays Kai, who's gorgeous, and Art. Uh, Akuna, it's a great, great three-hander, and they all look fantastic on camera. Listen, I have a blast filming action scenes. If you've seen Leverage or The Librarians, everybody knows my characters love to fight, and uh, I love doing stunt work. You know, I've done my own stunts for 20 years. You know, I was a fight choreographer on Leverage, and uh, and I just love doing it because it's really not about fighting. It's not how tough you are. It doesn't it has nothing to do with anything. It's a dance. You know, it's one, two, three, four. You know, and, and it's all this great stuff, and so it's fun to do the dance. Like I can't dance. You know what I mean? Like somebody could do an unbelievable salsa or, a, or a, you know, the, the, the tango, and it's just beautiful. This is my style of dancing, man. This is what I do. And I always have these great partners that help me out. You know, they just happen to be guys, but they're, they, they, we throw fast, we throw slow. We do this beautiful dance, man, and it's so much fun. And is there a risk of getting hurt? Always. But, you know, you can get hurt running down some stairs in a scene that you weren't doing a stunt. So it's fun, man, and it's... The way we're filming this show, the action is brutal. It's hardcore. With uh, this show, Almost Paradise, we pack in a lot of action. Um, and we worked really hard to deliver some quality action. We have a great stunt team, and they would um, rehearse relentlessly. I mean, I had an action scene that takes place on a yacht. I have an action scene that takes place in a hangar. I have driving scenes. We're doing stunts where we're knocking people off of motorcycles and scooters. And they have great teams. And as long as you get the time to rehearse and work with the team, you know, for a director, it just makes it a lot easier. But we are, we are definitely raising the bar. This show would be nothing without Cebu. So let's find out from the cast and crew what they love about this beautiful city. The way we approach a season and to tell stories uh, starts with the locations. Shooting in the Philippines, of course, was a challenge. It's just, you know, it's not like shooting in your backyard or, you know, being on a back lot in Atlanta. So um, the organization of just, you know, everybody's done maybe a movie in the, the Philippines or they've done their type of talk shows, but to do a show was a, a challenge. But after the first few days, everybody started getting the hang of it. But it was fun to to go on the locations and find the different areas that were available to us. And so many things were available to us. Um, in episode two, we do a lot of scenes at an airport hangar. We're basically allowed to shoot at the main airport 
in Cebu Mactan, which was great. I mean, to get that type of production value is something that you really couldn't do in, in the States. So, um, so stepping outside of the box and going to the Philippines gave us more toys to play in our sandbox, so to speak. So it, uh, it lent itself to, to bigger and better. So the Philippines being a place where no one has shot uh, an American or international television show, we have the stories themselves have come from our experience of uh, discovering this part of the Philippines and particularly Cebu and Mactan. And so the place we're shooting it is integral to the actual stories themselves. We allowed what we discovered when we scouted there to inform what kind of stories we were gonna tell. So hopefully the stories are a combination of the unique Filipino environment and a certain amount of classic Hollywood action adventure storytelling. To me, a big part about Filipino culture is the hospitality and the togetherness and family. And I think that that's, we show that a lot when Alex Walker comes in and we sort of take him in to our world and really he, we really bring him into our family, our little crazy family here. And no matter what circumstances we go through, in each case we go through, we, in the end, we always just end up as a family. The great thing about this place is you, you've never met a nicer people, you know what I mean? They, they, they've all, the whole crew has become my friends and my family. And just even, you know, even outside some of the, you know, some the, every, everyone outside that's not involved with the film, it's, everyone is so nice here and so willing to help out and so willing to, you know, shake your hand and stuff like that. And so it's really great because you have these two dynamics. You have some of the criminals that really aren't played by Filipino people. And then you have these really nice people and these unbelievable characters that come in to act with us. And so it's really, I kind of call it like, most people don't understand, but I call it like Baskin Robbins. There's like 31 flavors across the board. Love it. In some of our episodes, we, we really like to show some of the culture, um, whether it's just at a restaurant or out at the beach or at, at a big family celebration. So we give you a little bit of flavors throughout. We sat down with the cast to find out what it's like to get the band back together. I mean, I think the, I think the greatest thing about season two to be able to present this to people is the fact that we got the whole cast back. Uh, some people that are coming in that were on season one that everybody fell in love with, they may not have been uh, series regulars, but they loved these characters. We got the cast back, man. The players are there again. And so it's so much fun because last time we were co-workers that became family. Now we get to start as a family. It's exciting, and it's something I wished for, and it happened. I'm with my brother and sister, again, Samantha and Christian. I'm involved in it. I mean, I've never been this involved with any project. I only love the part where you do the acting, the scenes and stuff, and usually everything else is work. This would be work, but for Almost Paradise, it's not. It's great because you get to see the same faces, and you get to work with the amazing people that I got to work with on season one, and just the energy just being back on set and it's just, I love working on this show. <laughs> so yeah, it's amazing. What can you expect in season two? I mean, a lot, <laughs> but for Kai, I think um, in season one, she's more about her career, but in the second season, I think you see a little bit more of her personal life and a little more layers for Kai and you know, just outside of work. And so you see a little bit more vulnerable side to Kai, which is exciting. And I can't wait for you guys to see that. <laughs> I like the support role that Ernesto plays with Kai, with Alex and the chief. He's always got their back. I mean, they can, they can take the limelight, it's okay. I'll be behind you to watch that nothing comes at you that you don't see. It's very familiar to me because uh, I ride a bike, motorcycle, and I've never, I always turn down these uh, guys who are, hey, let's go riding to, yeah, let's go to that beach, it's four hours away and stuff like that. I mean, I like riding alone, but when I do have to ride with people, I'm always at the rear. 
And why do you want to be in the rear? Why don't you be in front? Because you've got good eyes. You can see the potholes. You can see this. You can see that. You can see an accident from a mile away. Isn't it? It's not that. I can't see you guys. I want to know if something happens to you guys because I'm, I'm OC about that. So I stay in the back. So that's a support role. You know, I've run a couple of times with runners who wanted to run just for the hell of it. I run alone. I love running alone. I don't like running with people. But when I did, I was always in the back too. I'll just keep up with you. You go as fast as you want. You know, so it's a support role. I like the support role. The protective uh, guy who watches your back. We issued a challenge and asked the cast and crew to describe season two in three words. Describe season two in three words. Action. Heart. And family. Season two of Almost Paradise is revelatory, it's exciting, and it's a, it's a nail biter. I guess first season was rest, relax, reload. This one is going to be reload, reload, reload. A lot of action this season, and I'm so proud of it. Thanks for joining us on this very special preview of season two of Almost Paradise. Don't forget to catch season two on Freebie July 21st, and we will be here every week on Paradise Found, the official Almost Paradise after show, to break it down with you. Until then, I'm Yael Teagle. I'm Carolyn. And we'll see you then.